day first, just uh, with Tyler Anderson coming off of a loss, but a really quality start for him, even though it was a tough loss for the team. How have you seen him maintain this all-star uh, playing level in the second half? He's done a great job. He takes very good care of himself uh, in between starts. Uh, he pr prepares really well. He's just such a great competitor. So, um, yeah, just kind of looking at the win-loss and how he's on the baseball, he's just been so dependable for us. And um, when we've needed innings, uh, he's done that. When we needed performance, he's done that. And so, uh, obviously, a huge add for our ball club. You guys just faced Milwaukee for four straight games. Now I'm going to see the Marlins for three. You'll see the Brewers again for three, and then we'll see Miami again in uh, in Florida. How do you balance just managing the team when you are facing another team so many times in a row? Well, I, I think it's certainly unique in, in the sense of over the next two weeks, you see these guys so much. Uh, these two ball clubs, um, obviously, each game, each interaction, we're gathering information. So um, it sort of levels the playing field when you see teams a lot. Um, right now, as it stands, we don't know the Marlins very well. Um, we know they always they pitch well. Um, we've got some good arms we're going to see here this weekend. Um, you know, for me, I think all all these games are going to be pretty close. Dave, what does it mean that Kershaw's throwing off the mound in the bullpen just a few minutes ago? What does that mean for when they return or where it is in the recovery? Um, I think it's sort of right on par with what we were hoping for initially. Um, so I think that right now, you prob it's probably like, uh, it's, right, it's been about two weeks since he hasn't thrown. I think it was that San Francisco Sunday game. Um, so getting off the mound has been a really good uh, thing for us and expecting him to come out of it well. Then you're looking at probably another BP, um, a simulated game and then potentially an activation. It's a sign that he's asymptomatic, at least that was the Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And I think that um, him going through the MRI process, get the imaging and nothing new, a new incident was certainly uh, very uh, encouraging for us. So to be asymptomatic, I think that we're pretty good, pretty happy where he's at. What was his workout today off the mound, mostly? It was just, a, it was a regular pen. Okay. So with Clayton, it's kind of upper 20, somewhere maybe around 30, something like that. So you don't think he'll need a rehab then? Um, I don't know if it's going to be a rehab or it's just going to be we get four of our hitters and we go out there and do like a three inning situation. Well, you see all progress wise, where is he at? Yancey is, uh, he's progressing. Um, yesterday was off. Uh, he'll throw the next few days in a row. I think he's out to about 120, 150. Um, I can't get too excited until we see him off a mound. Um, I, I think it's certainly take, taken longer than we all had hoped. Um, he certainly missed. So uh, just kind of where he's at, not off a mound, where we're at on the calendar. Obviously, you know, the hope is second week of September, you know, probably at the soonest. Where are Bruce Dar and uh, Blake in their rehabs? They're progressing. Bruce Dar was rained out yesterday, so he'll pitch again today. And uh, so either like a Sunday, I think it's Monday is his activation now because he got pushed back. I think Monday he'll be back with us. Yeah, David's been great. He's been consistent. He takes the baseball, uh, never runs from it. And so for him, like right now, he's sitting on three out of four days and he's a strike thrower, very efficient. Um, you can put him in any spot. And so where we had so much kind of uncertainty, losing some guys in the pen, uh, Dave has been a stalwart. He, he's a veteran and guys look to him. Has he been more valuable than what appears you know, on the surface? I, everybody holds him to that same expectations of who he was, but for who he is now, has he exceeded expectations? He, he's been fantastic and, and I can't relate to being a superstar and uh, having to sort of uh, redefine who you are as a ball player, um, but he's done everything we've asked and understood his 
his career is in a he's in a different part of his career, um, but he's been very additive with the with the with the bullpen. Um, obviously, his performance has been fantastic. It does. It does. I, I think that it's easy to say that um, Clayton's probably going to want to be on the more aggressive side, regardless. Um, and I think the organization is probably more on the uh, conservative side. So. Um, that's why it just speaks to just really trying to have as many conversations so we can kind of find some common ground. So you're looking at the following week with Clayton that he may come back? Is that if my math is right? Honestly, Mike, I think once we, we get through this one, let's get through another. Once we get through the sim game, then I think we'll, it'll, we'll be able to have a better idea of what we're talking about. What kind of benefit will it be to have Dustin to be able to come back and have a runway where he's not, you know, he doesn't have to come right in the thick of a pennant race, get a little cushion, he doesn't have to save the staff? It's great, it's great. Um, I, I think that coming off the surgery, I, I think that we were very conservative in his uh, return. And so now that looking at where we're in the standings, not having to lean on him, um, to make sure that number one, uh, he continues to build up and, and stay strong and healthy, and number two, with that, you know, expect the performance to be there. So absolutely, to not have, you know, to fight tooth and nail every single night when he pitches uh, is certainly a luxury that uh, we're all very grateful for. From talking to Dustin, it seems that he's uh, very clear that there's no pressure in that sense. It's not his job to step in and kind of save anything like that. He can only go every kind or six day. Is that a conversation that you had to have with him, or is that just something that with his personality it's something that he's very aware of himself? I, I think that uh, he's pretty self-aware and aware of the room. Um, he's a starter. He's going to play once every five or six days. And, um, you know, the days that he doesn't play or pitch, we're still expecting to win baseball games. But I will say that, you know, when it's his day to take the baseball, he's expecting to make a big impact and win a ball game. So um, I don't want to change that mindset. Um, but just still understanding that he's only going to play once every five or six days. But uh, we're certainly better with him on the roster. We all, you know, agree about agree to that. Dave, I'm not sure if you addressed this on the postseason schedule was released the other day, but just the fact that they eliminated travel days, does that mean you pretty much have to have four guys that you trust to start a baseball game in October? Well, in that DS, yeah, you do. Um, and then kind of the way that they, they did the, the CS, you might need five. So, um, yeah, having the pitching depth, starting depth is, is going to be paramount. Yeah. I think so. Um, I think that any time if you're going to have consecutive games in a series, uh, you have to tap into more depth because of usage. So um, if you're talking about you know, 14 guys on a roster, I like our 14.